Yeah, good stuff. I'll work out to dance. Okay, um, the future for RE is um, our topic for, for kind of the first 20 minutes of today's session. Um, and it was kind of one of those things that I think actually is so important for us as an RE community that we understand something of where our subjects is going, may be going, what's changing, uh, what might be different in the future. Um, I think it's also important that we understand some of the uh, processes that are, are behind um, RE, um, some of the legal sides of it, um, which some people don't understand because quite rightly they are very complex um, when it comes to RE. Um, just so I can get a bit of a gauge as to who's here, um, I hope people feel, feel happy with this. Uh, hands up if um, you work in an independent, an independent school. <laughs> uh, grammar school? That's what the food is for. Um, <laughs> academy? Free school? Community school, anyone else? Okay, so we've got quite a range of people um, here today. And obviously, um, RE is slightly different in all of those um, things. Actually, I didn't include myself, I teach in a faith school. Um, and so all of us actually come from a slightly different perspective when it comes to RE. Um, but we do have a lot in common as well. Um, just to start us off, um, because I think um, this is an issue that is, is really important to us. Um, on the board, there are 10 different acronyms um, that our RE departments in England right now have rebranded themselves as, okay? This, for me, highlights perhaps one of the problems with RE. If you asked a group of history teachers, what do you call your subject? There wouldn't really be any discussion. There certainly wouldn't be any kind of problem. And so, when we are talking about RE, we might be talking about what some people like to call religious, moral and philosophical studies. Could be beliefs, philosophy and ethics. Philosophy and ethics. Theology and religious studies. ER. Might be a fan of uh, the American uh, medical drama. <laughs> ethics and religion. Beliefs and values. Social and cultural studies. Beliefs and books. Mm. Culture, religion and philosophy. And perhaps my favourite, I'm going to my stars lesson, um, Society, Theology and Religious Studies. Now, there's also some interesting choice of emphasis, maybe they did it purely for the acronym, but when we are putting things like social or culture or society first, maybe that is where the issue of RE is getting itself a little bit confused. In the lead up to the, uh, the consultation process on the new GCCs and A-levels, there was a lot of discussion about the aims and the purpose of RE. What are we trying to do? Again, if we talk to colleagues in some other subjects, they would be absolutely clear in what their aims and purpose are. Um, for many people, it would actually be in their national curriculum do document. And even if you didn't follow that national curriculum document, it would be a point of reference. Um, one of the people that contributed to that whole consultation progress, uh, uh, process that many of you may have read or attended some meetings of was Charlotte Vardy. And she came up with 10 different aims um, of RE. Is it to teach young people about their own religion, a quest for personal meaning, supporting the school ethos, a hub for SNSC? Is it just another academic humanities subject? Is it what we call in the UK a history of ideas or a theory of knowledge? Is it um, an opportunity just to teach higher level thinking skills? We love that in RE, don't we? We, we kind of take pride that we, we are kind of the, the bastions of critical thinking. We are the best at making our students reflect. Um, do we ask, are we simply trying to prepare them for going off to university? Are we doing simply certified courses in statutory RE? And I don't know if we'll have lots of time to discuss that today, but again, a real tension. What's RE? What's uh, what we teach um, at GCSE um, and A-level? Is it a sociological exploration of the phenomenon of religion? Is it an opportunity for young people to address the ultimate questions, again, something we love to pride ourselves on? All of these are possible. Quite a few of them are probable. Um, is this something that is 
really a, a complexity that maybe it's what makes our subject special. Maybe that's what, what we love about our subject, but ultimately is it going to cause us lots of problems? These are by no means the only aims. I, there was a, an article that I saw shared online quite recently um, that suggested um, from an academic paper that one of the points of RE was kind of to provide almost like a shopping opportunity to make our students, or give our students the opportunity to pick their own religion. We <laughs> present all of them and they get to pick one. Again, for me, that just is a little bit scary. Um, the law, um, obviously, as many of you know, comes from the 1944 Education Act, um, which was then kind of reformed in 1988. Um, and obviously, um, the law is quite clear that in 1944 it said religious instruction, in 1988 said um, religious education was compulsory until students left school. It's probably one of the most broken laws going. It's so complex because we are not part of the national curriculum, but we're compulsory. Anyone know the only other thing that is part of um, the basic curriculum? Sex and religious and uh, relationships education. They're the three things in our basic curriculum. The national curriculum, RE, and sex and relationships. Um, because this law is quite complex, uh, many head teachers don't understand. It's why we're in the situation where head teachers um, are getting rid of GCSE RE. It's why we're in a situation where people are being merged with history and geography, where people are being told, actually, you haven't got any curriculum time anymore, but we'll do one or two RE days during the year. Because head teachers just don't get it. And let's be honest. For many head teachers, it's not very high on their priority to make the effort to understand. The question is going to be, with the future of RE, as to whether this law is right. And if a law is constantly being broken, um, it perhaps suggests um, that maybe there is something wrong with it. One of the other important considerations um, for many of us um, teaching RE is this, the idea and the role of sacrades. Um, actually, SACRAs nowadays influence a far fewer number of schools. Um, they exist in every education authority, um, and they produce a syllabus every five years um, that's followed by community schools. Many of you will probably follow your local, locally agreed syllabus, but you might not. Because if you're an academy, you don't have to. If you're a free school, you don't have to. If you're a faith school, you don't have to. Um, so actually, what is this, uh, this organisation enshrined in law and are they helping the RE community or actually are we saying, hang on a minute, not only can we not decide on our name, not only can we not decide on our aims and purposes, but there is 152 um, syllabuses, if not more, that exist to teach RE. That's before we even start thinking about the time, effort, energy and cost that goes into producing those. Um, is there an alternative? Is there something that perhaps could exist within RE that could in some way unite us? So people don't start running off in different directions because they're fighting against their teacher, they're desperate to make their subject more relevant and engaging, and they're attempting all kinds of weird and wonderful things in RE. Um, because they're not clear on the purpose or their aims, um, are they trying to do something that the rest of us perhaps raise our eyebrows at? Um, when we've got so many different people in so many different areas doing so many different things, it's quite amazing that we've all come in a room together tonight because actually we're, are we even doing the same subject? Um, so is there an alternative? Um, some people are arguing that maybe we want to join the national curriculum. Maybe that would make RE better. Maybe it would have a clear set of aims that would actually be universal for the whole of England. Do we need some kind of core curriculum that instead of kind of um, spending its time obsessing about different ways of delivery, different approaches, um, I'll be honest, I've been teaching RE for, for 10 years and kind of all the different approaches to RE um, don't really interest me that much. I'm, uh, you know, I really am focused on delivering uh, good quality education in the classroom without kind of thinking, is this a phenomenological approach? If I get the words out, I can't even say it, that's why I'm not interested. Um, <laughs> is it a critical realist approach? I don't know. Um, and so, again, are we overly confusing ourselves? Again, another uh, suggestion that's being discussed at the minute, um, could we have something a little bit different? Because we've learned from RE that if we say non-statutory in front of anything, most people mm -hmm. ignore it. Could we have something like a, a minimum entitlement that actually would bring on board everyone? Even faith schools, even free schools, uh, even academies would actually look at this and say, this is a good body uh, of knowledge, this is a good curriculum that actually we can all get on board with. Independent schools, uh, free schools, academies would all look at this, 
some people even suggested the faith schools might look at it and say, yeah, this is good. We've got the extra time. We can build around it. We can put the stuff that we perhaps label as confessionism or instruction around this because this is so good and this actually sets out exactly what our subject is and what it's all about. Is it a, poss is it a possibility? Is it a reality? Um, other things that are going to need to be discussed as we, we, we move forward in the world of RE, um, we quite often get lumped with collective worship. How many of you in here as RE teachers are also in charge of collective worship? Seems quite odd in some respects. It seems quite odd in some respects. But actually, these two things get lumped together. Are they really the same thing? Yeah, obviously, there may be connections. The law says that we need to provide collective worship, which is broadly Christian. Is that reflective of the country we live in? Is that reflective of every school? Um, I think, to be honest, that's a law that may need to be tweaked rather than got rid of uh, because there will be huge resistance to it. Um, and obviously, this part of this um, is connected with the whole Trojan horse um, and schools applying um, to move away from being broadly Christian. And obviously, we are probably aware, at least in part, of some of the difficulties faced there. Um, the right to withdraw, another very weird thing about RA. Um, you don't like maths? Tough, you've got to stay there. You don't like RA? Oh, fine, you can withdraw. Um, in reality, um, very few students do with use that right to withdraw. In fact, teachers can use it as well. Teachers in primary school can refuse to teach RE, um, and that's quite acceptable under the law. Um, the question is, at Key Stage 4, could RE be better if this law was changed? If RE was not compulsory at Key Stage 4, if it was completely an option, would that make RE better? Many schools are doing half-course GCC because they have to, because they have to do the RE, they have to do the legal bit. So they, they decide to do that through a study of RS, trying to kind of tick two boxes in one way. As RE teachers, if it was purely an option and the only students you got at Key Stage 4 were those who have chosen to do it, would that make RE better? Would that improve the standard of RE? The question would be, for many people, will we see a big drop in numbers? Are we ready to have that discussion about quantity and quality? If we're talking about wanting to be equal with history and geography, the fact that our subject is compulsory, are we ever going to get a parity? Are we ever going to be part of the EBAC when actually students are forced to do our subjects already? Okay? Big questions. I don't necessarily have the answers. Um, this is one suggestion. At the minute, we are in a position where RE has very weak structures. It is incredibly fragmented. Even in this room, we are not united on very much at all. The result of that is low status. Her teachers don't get it, colleagues don't get it, our students don't get it. And the result, that actually there is some very poor RE going on. I am quite confident that you have given up your evening, you've perhaps travelled quite a way to come here. I would be you know, very confident there's lots of really, really good RE going on in your classroom. But we are a very small number of the total number of RE teachers. We've got RE teachers struggling on their own in departments uh, where they have no one to talk, turn to. They don't really have much guidance. They look online and everyone seems to be doing something different because they probably are. And where do they turn to? Where do they go? Would it be possible that with a change in the law, we could have some tighter structures? Could that law be changed um, so actually it allows us to have, you know, uh, a more similar common ground where we might actually share, share some aims, we might share some purposes, we might even share some same bodies of knowledge that we're working from. Oh, and after that, will we have a higher status? If our head teacher knows that at Key Stage 4 we're just an option, like history and geography, and we need the same amount of time as history and geography because we're... On a, par on a par with them. We don't need to start in year nine, because history and geography don't. We don't need to try and deliver it in an hour a week, because history and geography don't. And we don't have to try and deliver it to the whole school, because history and geography don't. Is that actually um, going to have um, uh, a higher status for us? And certainly it's some kind of parity, because at the minute, RE just isn't. And will that lead to better standards? I mean, I don't think anyone can answer that for sure. No one could say for definite, well, yeah, definitely, if we had this minimum enticement or core curriculum, head teachers would get it, colleagues would get it, students would get it, RE would instantly be better. But would we be moving in the right direction? We've got to make a decision, really, as an RE community, about what we want. What are the decisions that we are going to make? They might be out of our hand. It might be Nick Gibb that makes all those decisions for us. But actually... We do have a power if we start talking to one another, if we start working together, and we can certainly put forward what we think, as RE teachers, could be the best possible practice. 
there are already things happening, and, and Cullen St. Gabriel is a, a fantastic organisation that help out RE in, in lots of different ways, and if you haven't come across them yet, please do. Um, they've already had some thinking days about this, um, and there's various documents, and I'll put a link up, which kind of, you can have a read of these later. They started to look at, you know, what are these different possible of, uh, possibilities of future? Do we want to reform SACRAs and the local agreed syllabuses? Do we want to get rid of them? Do we want to start trying to put a curriculum together? What is it that we want as a, an RE community and how we're going to get there? And we actually put together um, some five-year plans. I think actually five years is too short. I think we probably need to be looking at a 10 to 15-year plan for RE. But in order to do that, we need to be really clear about what we want to do. Um, the new qualifications are going to have um, a, a, an effect on this. Um, the new specs are going to be published um, imminently. Very, very soon we are going to be finding out exactly what we're teaching at GCC and A-level. Um, the most important thing to remember is they're going to be harder. Um, they're going to be a lot tougher. And the scary thing for me, going to various different RE events, is that people still don't quite seem to uh, realise that, that actually you are going to really, really struggle if you're trying to teach in an hour a week. Um, because there is so much more content and it's so much more difficult. Um, these will be approved by Ofqual in October 2015, ready to be examined in May 2018 and not before. Um, so again, those of you that are doing um, a three-year course starting in year nine, um, this poses some, some real challenges to you. But we need to be ready. Um, the beauty of Key Stage 4, perhaps differently to Key Stage 3, is we are actually teaching to GCSEs um, that do have something of a core curriculum and we can share our resources and we can talk to colleagues um, that are doing AQA or OCR or Excel and we can actually share our expertise and knowledge. Um, you know, maybe that is exactly the reason why we need to be changing at Key Stage 3. Um, again, this whole other problem we have, um, again about identity. Um, Adam Dinham, in, in, in some of his work, talks about the fact that we as RE teachers, we're desperate for all this. We want all this because this legitimises our subject. When Ofsted come in, we can say, well, we're the best at SMSC, the new one. We're, we're the ones that teach British values. We are trying to do all of this. And the question is, is that what RE is really about? Is that what the study of religion and beliefs is all about? Um, it's scary, some of the things that even have tried to creep in um, to the GC, some of the GC syllabuses. Is bullying really RE? We get fixated with the environment. Um, I'm quite happy in some respects. Yes, it's interesting and engaging for the students. It's probably the bit that my students like the most. But abortion and euthanasia, are they really taught very well at GCSE? Is it really about religion? Um, or is it some kind of sociological study that, yes, our students are interested in, um, but is it really our subject? Some big questions I don't necessarily have all the answers to. Um, again, um, we kind of try to be um, relevant and engaging, but sometimes we just scratch at the surface of lots of different things. I was talking to a teacher um, the other day who was at free school in London, and she's teaching uh, humanities to year seven. They are doing their whole the year seven RE curriculum in one half a term. They've got seven lessons. The first lesson is what is religion. They've then got one lesson um, on each of the, the six uh, major world religions. Um, you know, I was asked, um, how, how do you teach Islam in one lesson? Have you got a resource for that? Oh. No, I haven't. Um, you know, but this is, this is the reality. And again, if you are in very limited time, um, do we need to be looking at doing just less things in more detail? This is kind of Tim Oates uh, from Cambridge Assessment, done work uh, with various examples and so on. He's, you know, saying this is really important. And when religion does have the depth that it does, um, surely maybe this, we need to be leaders in this in RE. OK, um, there are some reports coming out very soon. The, the Charles Clark and Linda Woodhead one, uh, I am reliably informed, is going to really hit on a lot of these issues at a level of influence far higher than me. Um, that's, that's going on in the House of Commons, it's launch. Um, and so, you know, this is, this is something that which potentially um, discusses um, about the future of RE, about law, about the legal changes that may be that we need to, to have there. Um, particularly, uh, certainly Linda Woodhead's, a lot of her research is about the increased kind of secularisation and uh, the fact that, you know, church sentences is down and so on. You know, is it right to have this kind of real Christian focus in our schools? Um, where next? I mean, you're already at your, your local group and I do hope that you're going to continue to be uh, involved if you've come along tonight. Uh, I'm sure Flora um, and Juliet are going to be kind of making sure that you come again and maybe you can think about organising. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Flora, you're just the, the, the person that's hosting us and, and probably the person that's kind of kick-started all of this off. 
Um, last year, uh, earlier this year, I organised um, the London Rehab, which was a big conference in London, which was just amazing. I still don't know quite how I managed to pull it off, uh, <laughs> but it happened and it was great. Um, and, you know, that's something we're looking at doing again next year. Um, the, the opportunities that exist through social networking, through Twitter and Facebook, um, it's just amazing. Sometimes you can just drop an email to people and they just say, yeah, I'll do that for you. Yeah, I'll come along. Um, there's been a bit of an explosion over the last couple of weeks where, where RE teachers are starting to reflect. Um, Rebecca, you were one of the people I spoke to on Saturday, and Rebecca said, oh, I don't really have anything to say about RE, and then kind of went home on Saturday night and wrote a fantastic blog just reflecting on kind of religious literacy uh, about herself as an RE teacher, but about the subject that she teaches. Um, and, you know, if you look up on Twitter or Google Blogs in RE, there's some RE teachers that are just actually thinking about uh, the subject and how they're going to uh, deliver it and how... Uh, they want to change it and, and so on and I think those conversations are really important because when you start to read, when you start to engage, we do start to see those common themes and if we can't work out what the purposes and aims are yet, maybe by talking, by meeting, by writing, we might start to find them. Um, and Cullum St Gabriel's is organising a fantastic weekend, um, it's free. Uh, if you've never been to one of the Cullum St Gabriel's weekends, I'd very highly recommend it. Uh, it's on the Cullum website. It's called Energising RE 200, uh, 2015. Um, it's uh, a fantastic weekend that's all free um, near, near Reading. Um, and 200 old RE teachers get in a room and talk about RE and have a glass of wine and sort lots of problems out, <laughs> kind of. Um, but it's, it's a fantastic weekend to continue these discussions. Um, that has been a very kind of whistle-stop tour uh, on the future of RE. Uh, you can download the presentation there. Um, at that website, um, but feel free to talk to me later in the evening. I don't have the answers, I don't have any authority, um, I just think it's really important that we consider something about the future of our subject. Thank you for listening. <laughs>